Hi, in this video, we're going to show you the six steps that you need to follow to pass a numerical reasoning test. We're going to walk you through some example questions, show you the approach that you need to follow step by step, and we're also going to share with you the one most important secret that you need to know to pass a numerical reasoning test. Hi, my name is Mike Kennedy. I run assessmentcenterhq.com. We help people pass online tests and succeed at assessment centres. The one question that I get asked more than anything else is, how do I pass a numerical reasoning test? It's the one area that I get more emails about than anything else. So I thought for once and for all, we'll make a video that takes people through step by step how to pass a numerical reasoning test. So joining me today is, uh, is John Bridges. John, welcome. Right. Hi, thank could you. you uh, could you tell people a little bit about your, yes, your background? Yes, of course I can. Hi, I'm John. I'm a mathematician. I've got experience with recruitment and I help people answer those difficult data handling questions. Okay, perfect. You sound like just a man for the job, John. Step number one, very, very important. Uh, I wonder if you could expand on it a bit, John, is, is that you must manage the timing of the test yeah. very, very carefully. I think effective management is the first key point in passing these tests. And why, why is the time, you know, why do we need to manage the time so carefully, John? What is it about it that's, well, that's so crucial? There's two points. You're being measured on two things when you sit these tests. How many questions you get right and what time it takes you to answer the questions. And it's quite important, I guess, to point out to people that you, you, when you sit these tests, your performance is measured down to the last second, you know, you're taking these tests against hundreds of other candidates, so of course the accuracy is important, but also the time that you take. It's important you don't run out of time when you're doing the test, so you know, look, ahead, look ahead, see how many questions you've got to answer, um, and plan out your time accordingly. Making the decision to move on from a difficult question so you can answer others is very important. Okay, so John, you're going to take us through a few example questions. Um, and uh, we've got a few different examples to, to run through today, so let's, let's get stuck in. Okay, let's have a look at the first question. So the first thing I'm going to do is read the question. Before I look at the data, I'm going to read the question. What is the minimum number of Zoombox 2 units that must be sold in order to equal the profit made from selling 25 Zoombox 1 units after a 13 increase in Zoombox 1's profit? So immediately, I've narrowed the information down to these two rows, zoom box one and zoom box two, and this column, profit per unit. So out of all those data points on there, of which there are 25, I've immediately narrowed it down to two pieces of information. A lot of people, when they would sit these tests, uh, you know, and I know this to be true, they would look much more at the data uh, you know, people want to understand the data. What's this graph? What's this spreadsheet? What's this pie chart? What's it telling me? But what you did there was you focused purely on the question to begin with. You made sure that you understood that question. Okay, so we focused on the question first. We've managed to rule out quite a lot of unnecessary data. Right, yes. What's next? Well, the next thing is, I'll read the question. It says, after a 13% increase in Zoombox 1's profit, so the first thing we're going to do is work out a 13% increase in Zoombox 1's profit, which is this figure here. So 33.88, to increase it by 13%, we're going to multiply it by 1.13. Okay, so what someone would actually type into the calculator there, 33.88, times multiplied, 1.13. Multiplied by 1.13. Okay. It then says, we go back to the question again, it then says 25 Zoombox 1's. So we need, that's the profit from one that we've just worked out. We're now going to multiply that by 25 to work out the profit from 25. I'll go back to the question again. It says, what is the minimum, and that's an important word, number of Zoombox 2 units that must be sold in order to equal the profit made from selling 25 Zoombox 1s after a 13% increase? I divide the answer by this after increasing by 25 by 13% and multiplying by 25 by the profit from one of these. That will give me the answer. What's really interesting there, John, is you know, is you know, is that you're bouncing back and forth between Correct. the data Correct. and the question. You're constantly going back and forth between the two. Yeah. I'm constantly referencing the question against the data. I'm checking myself, I'm referencing myself. Also, another interesting you know strategy there is that you kind of started at the end of the question. 
mm -hmm. and work your way back through mm -hmm. it, you know, which um, I don't think a lot of people would naturally necessarily start well, that way, but it, that, that actually is the key piece of it. The starting yes. point in that question is it, at the it, end. It, it is. It? On, on this particular question, you're almost doing the maths in reverse to the way it's asked. Okay, great stuff. So, so I haven't gone through that process. The answer for this one. Well, the answer comes out at 24.667. But if you remember earlier, I said it says, what is the minimum number of Zoombox 2 units that are sold? There's no answer for 24.667. It says 24.667 is the answer you get from the calculation, but the minimum number to get 24.667 is going to be 25. Keyword, minimum. So for that one, we actually had to round up. You had to round up, at yes. At the end, right, okay. Okay, great stuff. Okay, so, uh, so, so far we've gone through three steps. We've gone through managing your time carefully. Correct. We've gone through starting with the question. Correct. And we've also said it's important to seesaw back and forth exactly. between the data and the question. Okay, great. Let's, uh, let's move on to another question. Okay, John's going to take us through uh, another example here. So, John, what, what, have, what have we got here? Okay, so if we look at the question again, that's the first thing we need to do. Read the question. In June, the Beckham's family expenditure on entertainment was $220. What were the total family costs in July if expenditure on the same consumption group increased by 15%? So immediately, I can narrow down what I'm looking at to entertainment and these two figures. We want to know June and July. Okay, so basically we're following the same steps, aren't we, that we Correct, did for the yes. first question. Step number, so, you know, step number two in our six steps, yes. we, we, f we begin with the, with the question. We don't wade into the data, don't try and understand it all, focus on the question, and immediately you can rule out a lot of the, the, the data that's not needed. Correct, okay. yes. So it tells us that expenditure in June on entertainment was $220. It tells us if expenditure on the same consumption group increased by 15%, what were the total family costs in July? So we're going to increase $220 by 15% to work out how much was spent on entertainment in July. So 220 multiplied by 1.15 is going to give us that figure. Then we want to work out what the total cost in July is. Well, we know what 3.3% of the cost was. We want to find out what 1% of the cost is. So we can multiply that by 100 to find out what 100% of the cost is. So when we've multiplied that figure of $220 by 1.15, we're then going to divide it by 3.3 to find 1%, multiply it by 100, that gives us the total cost in July. And when we've calculated that, you'll find the answer is C. Okay, fantastic. For the final three steps, including the one most important secret that you need to know to pass a numerical reasoning test, please head over to the site assessmentcenterhq.com forward slash secret. There's a link to it in the video info below. And if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.